There's been an almost 20-fold increase in the number of strip searches carried out by New South Wales Police since 2006. That's according to a new report. And lawyers say the searches are often unlawful. Here's Dr Vicky Sentis from the University of New South Wales Faculty of Law who co-wrote uh, the report. Thanks for being with us, Vicky. Um, so firstly, what's behind this just incredible rise in the number of strip searches, 20-fold in 12 years? Our research is focused at looking at the law in New South Wales and our assessment is that it's too broad and it's too vague and that's actually one of the driving forces in the increase in the strip searches. So there's very meant to be quite strict legal criteria. You can only use a strip search if the circumstances are so serious and urgent to warrant it. What our research showed is most of the charges that come from a strip search, so they're only about 30% of all strip searches end in criminal charges, mm. most of those charges, over 80%, are in relation to drug possession charges. Now, on its face, that does not meet the legal criteria of serious and urgent circumstances. So why aren't the rules being followed? Well, one of our recommendations is to provide much clearer guidance to police. So to the ordinary police officer, it's not clear what serious and urgent circumstances are. In a broader political environment where there might be a focus on addressing the harms of drugs. At the same time, there's a focus across the nation around having a public debate around decriminalising mere drug possession. So our research shows that very few of the charges coming from strip searches mm. are actually for drug supply, which is the much more serious offence. Now, there are also particular rules about how strip searches are conducted. That's right. So the law in New South Wales, like most other states, has what's known as mandatory rules to protect the privacy and the dignity of the person. And one of the key principles is that the most least invasive search be used, which means that if police have a reasonable suspicion that someone's committing an offence, normally they should conduct a general search, which is asking you to remove your outer clothing, like your jacket, and doing a pat search um, you know, or a frisk search, and that strip searches are really meant to be exceptional in emergency mm. type situations, not as the first port of call or even the second port of call if there's a suspicion of drug possession. Is there also a particular demographic that's uh, subject to more strip searches than another? So our research found that about 45% of all strip searches happen to young people 25 years and younger. So that's certainly a concern. I mean, one aspect of strip searches that's been of concern in the media are increasing reports from young people who attend music festivals, in particular young women who may have experienced a sexual assault in the past and they're re-traumatised by having to remove all of their clothing mm. or the bottom half of their clothing and being required by police to squat and cough. And what we're seeing is quite a vicious cycle where often a drug detection dog might indicate uh, beside a person and the research is that the drug dogs aren't always right and that unfortunately sometimes gives police the impression that they should either go straight to a strip search uh, because you know young people are adapting their behaviour in response to drug dogs and they are indeed sometimes secreting drugs inside their body uh, to avoid the drug detection dog. But what we're saying is if the focus should be on serious and urgent, let's limit the law to use strip searches for serious weapon offences and drug supply where there's a risk to the safety of the person. Dr Vicky Santos, thank you. Thank you.